Hello, Seymour Better here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and today I'm going to show you how I cut in a pair of invisible bifocals with Transitions Gray Lenses and Crizal Anti-Glare for one of my patients, Oakley 5113, which is the Lizard, color 02, which is the Pewter in the 56 eye size. Let me go ahead and take everything out of the original packaging as Oakley sends it to me. Of course, you got the Oakley hard case. Inside is the soft sock, which doubles as a both a carrying bag and a cleaning cloth. And I will take it out of that. And of course, it comes with little plastic sleeves on both temples to protect the temples during rubbing together while it is in shipping. And this is the Lizard, a very lightweight titanium frame. I love the hinge. Look at that design. Isn't that very unique? Oakley is very, very stylish, very strong, very durable, very practical. And I'm not allowed to put them on my website, so this is just to show you how I cut lenses for them. Of course, if you want one of these, if you're a patient, of course, if you're watching this video, you're a patient of mine. You may contact me if you want one of these frames or any other Oakleys. I just don't have them on my website. So, this is a semi-rimless frame, meaning that there's no frame going around it. Semi being half, is only a frame at the top. So, in order to trace this, I need to put two dots on the lenses. I have this graph which allows me, let me take the top off the lid, which allows me to put two dots, which is essentially a straight line, on the lens. Make sure that is in there right, and it is. I can set that down now. In case you guys missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> you know I'm sneaking that bad joke in. You're not getting away in this video without me telling bad jokes. So I have a straight line on there, and the reason why I do that is I use this tool next. It has a, it allows, it has the same type of sticker I used to cut the lenses that, on here. So I pop out the original demo lens, and of course these frames come with a pattern, but I like using the lens itself. And the reason I put those two dots on there is going to line up with the dot that is on the on the pattern holder. Pardon as I concentrate and study to make sure everything's lined up perfectly and it is. I press that on there. I put this into the tracing element of my blocker. And before I go any further, I want to go ahead and program the shape into the computer. You are secret agent 632, so I'm going to... Come on. There we go. So years from now, should this patient need more lenses, they don't have to mail me the frames or bring me the frames. I can cut the lenses and mail them right to you and you can install them at home with a little piece of ribbon and I'll show you how to do that. So, let's go ahead. The first thing, I'm going to hit the trace button, but it's going to ask me the distance between the lenses. And even though Oakley says it's 18, I like to measure myself. So I'm going to go ahead and just trace the right lens this time. It's asking me the pattern. I'm just going to hit the check mark because it is 18. I don't need to change anything. But a little stylus is going to pop up and it's going to go around and trace the circumference of the right lens here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine, authentic Oakley frame for me and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. Today, we are cutting prescription lenses. That is the shape of the lens we'll be cutting. If I pull that off and hold that up, you can see that is the actual real size and shape. Let's go ahead and move it to the next screen. I'm going to go ahead and pull this sticker off and apply it towards my monster. Come on, monster. There we go. And I need to enter the pupillary distance, 32.5 for the right eye. The computer starts at 32.5, so I don't have to do anything. But the height of the invisible bifocal, the optical center height, is 21. I'm going to raise that up. Ah, stop it. Let's go back to the screen. Raise up and tap the plus button several times till we get to 21. And I want to change the layout. This is for a single vision lens. Instead, I could be cutting the line style bifocal, but this is that's the graph I would use for that. But these are the invisible bifocal, so I need this layout chart. It's known as a layout chart because ahead of time, now these lenses come with yellow paint on here. I come down here to this machine. I put the dots. Every invisible bifocal has two little circles on either side. 
and it tells the material and the brand of invisible bifocal you're using today and as always i use the essilor ideal advanced it's a premium top tier digital freeform lens on this side with the side where i've underlined is the power this bifocal strength is 225 and laser engraved into the lens are the numbers 22 which is short for 225 because everything's in quarter increments so with those two dots i can lay it out on this chart my essilor verilux chart and it tells me where it's going to sit directly in front of your pupil so once i've done that let me go ahead and put the tool away once i've done that i've got well hopefully you can see it that's going to go right up at your pupil and those two dots tells me that it's lined up in there perfectly this blue cross is the geometric center of the frame the eye is just above that and in inset inward so i'm going to put the black dot right there in front of the pupil these other two dots line up i have them sitting on top of this orange bar that is three rows down or two up from the bottom oops i'm getting ahead of myself i need two blocks to attach to your lenses so let me go ahead i need to attach two double-sided adhesive stickers of which i've got those here i'm going to place the sticker on the first block do the same thing for the second one now on the back is a silver button that is a magnet that's going to do its job twice today the first time it's going to hold it in place and attach itself to another magnet there in the arm i'm going to pull the paper away to make the other side sticky the second side line up the magnet so it stays in there and this is laid out just perfectly let me just see the size of the lens that's looking good and hit that button the arm comes down and places the block onto the right lens we're going to do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right just like me pull the paper away to make the black side sticky line up the magnet right there now the pupillary distance for your left eye a little bit smaller 30.5 it has mirrored the right so it, it transferred over the 32.5 i'm going to drop that down to 30.5 and of course same optical center height for the invisible bifocal get everything lined up in there just perfectly the black dot in front of your pupil those other two dots tells me that it's oriented in there perfectly and it's not crooked check to make sure the lens is large enough to fit over the lens we're looking good there hit that button and now the arm comes down and places the block onto the left lens now this is the edger this is what's going to do all the work while i run my mouth this costs forty thousand dollars it weighs 200 pounds i recommend everyone go out buy their own then you can cut your own oakley's at home and you won't need this guy anymore with two thumbs to do it for you the actual cutting wheel is this diamond crusted wheel on the left it's going to act like a heavy grid sandpaper to grind away your lens material this wheel in the center that normally puts the v-shaped bevel on the lens is only going to flatten out the lens because this is a semi rimless and there is no groove to put on there in fact just the opposite i have let me show you what wheel will be cutting the cutting the groove onto the lens when you see this come out during the video when the water is spraying this wheel does the safety bevel on the lenses this blade is going to cut the groove onto the lens so it stays inside the groove of the of the channel you actually have you see this string at the bottom you have an equal one on the top that is made into the frame and but everyone sees this one there's a second one in the top because there is a groove i can run my fingernail all the way around this lens and that's this blade is going to cut that groove all the way in there so let's go ahead and close the door back everything's going to move over Press this on there firmly now the magnet's going to do it second time today it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck or as i like to call it the charles because i don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck that's right i'm going to wake up the computer this is job 632 632 and that's the shape we'll be cutting now it's showing that it is a semi rimless that's going to cut a groove onto it I'm not going to polish the edge of this lens and I'll explain why later. This is a perfect example when I would polish a lens or could, I'm not going to. I am going to place a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens, a lighter one. I'm going to place a slightly heavier one on the back convex surface of the lens. So I'm going to go ahead and 
course these are polycarbonate lenses if they were plastic high index plastic or trivex i would select that although i wouldn't i'm not going to say never but i can't imagine a scenario where i would use a plastic lens in a frame like this because the tendency of the lens to chip or to flake so i'm gonna hit the green arrow which is start in every language the door closes the clamp shuts and then the lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame at first and you can see as it's tracing out the shape and then it's doing it a second time measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to let to know exactly and precisely where halfway is to know exactly where to cut the groove into the lens now you can see the cutting wheel starting up it's going to move over and the lens is going to drop down onto it now if you see light flickering in the background that is water there to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic high index plastic and trivex lenses cut wet meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle now water will spray onto this lens for the last 20 seconds just to wash away any optical debris that you see beginning to form on the edge of the lenses as i mentioned your lenses are made out of polycarbonate polycarb is 40 percent thinner and lighter than regular plastic they are virtually unbreakable these are ballistics grade high impact lenses the same type of lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and debris as well as the same type of lens material that osha requests or makes you wear in their safety classes now it also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin. Well, your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So, this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied, unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that you have to reapply when you're in direct exposure to the sun. Now, these lenses have transitions, which I'll demonstrate later in this box. We also have the Crizal Anti-Glare. Anti-Glare is three features in one. It eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain, but from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead, fluorescent lights, and such. Now, the second feature, it's a reflection-free lens. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses. You can see the reflection of the fluorescent lights in this. You see it's greatly reduced on this lens in my right hand. So if someone takes a picture with a flash, or if you take a selfie, you don't see the reflection of the camera into the lens. So again, it makes for much better eye contact. Now, the I also went ahead and had these lenses made aspheric. Aspheric simply means not spherical. This lens here is spherical, meaning it's round. It's mounted in every direction. This is, has a flatter curvature. The ones that I'm cutting for your prescription to fit in today's flatter curvature frames. So that too gives you a better cosmetic look. Now, the third feature that I like which is the practical side is that the machine that applies the Crizal anti-glare coating costs well over a million dollars and it takes over 24 hours to vaporize eight different coatings onto your lens so because of the time and the expense of doing that Crizal puts the industry's hardest scratch coating on their lenses to protect your time and investment now if you notice your lens is completely flat just like a nickel if i were to take it out now it could stand up on the counter on its own in just a moment the groove will be cut into the lens that spinning blade is cutting a groove all the way around the lens so it will stay in place being held in place by the string which is a monofilament essentially it's like a 20 to 30 pound fishing line the nice thing about that, should you ever step or sit on this frame and the string breaks, the frame goes limp. Whereas in a frame like I'm wearing, a plastic frame or a metal frame, if you step on it, it breaks. There's nothing that can be done to repair that. So if you're rough on glasses, this is a nice design. Don't let people tell you that it's weaker because of the string. There's pros and cons to everything. You can see some good schwartz. That's the optical sawdust that's still clinging to the lens. Now this blade is cutting a groove six tenths of a millimeter into the lens at a width of 0.6 of a millimeter, 60% of one millimeter.
so the, the lens is going to go back down onto the bevel wheel to flatten everything again. Any rough spots will be removed from the grooving of the lens. Once the lens is completely flat, then the safety bevel will be applied to the front and rear surface of the lens. Now, as I mentioned before, I have the opportunity, the wheel on the very right is the polishing wheel. The reason why I do not polish and I choose not to polish, it's the old, the old saying, form versus function. Cosmetically from the side, people will say that the lens looks better polished. That is a cosmetic feature. However, when it is polished, it lets light in through the edge of the lens, creating glare. This person is paid to have anti-glare coating on their lenses, on the front surface and on the rear surface. So I figured this person does not want glare coming in through the side of the lens. And when we get back to it, how many people look at your profile versus look you directly in the eye. And when you polish a lens, when light comes in, it gives you a little ghostly glare image, a little skeleton look, as I call it. Which, again, it gives you, a, to me, a worsening cosmetic look. Now, there's people out there who have been wearing polish for years and it doesn't bother them. I get people coming in that complain about the glare because their lenses are polished. And because my job is to help you see as well as possible, I do not put the, the glare on... I mean, I do not put polished lenses, polish the edges of lenses because I want you to see as well as possible. The other analogy, my mother lives in an older home in the city, so she decided to have double pane, highly efficient windows installed in her home. But because she has a dog, she would leave the back door open off the kitchen so her, the dog could go in and out through the door. And I said, Mom, why did you pay to have energy-efficient windows installed all the way throughout the house only to leave the back door open, letting in, letting in the cold air, and so she has to run the heat longer, and I'm just cleaning everything off the lens with my, with my thumbnail. Now, that is the edge of your lens. It is not that thick. If it was very thick, then we could sit there and have the conversation whether to polish or not, but there's no need to do it because very little of that lens is even seen. Let me go ahead and start cutting the left lens. I'm going to flip that over to L. Put the lens into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby, the Chuckster, the Chuckarama, the Chuckmaster. Hit the green arrow, which is starred in every language. The door closes. And then again, the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the left lens. And just like before, it's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel, the groove. So it's exactly the 50% mark. Now, if I wanted to, I could move the bevel forwards or backwards. But in this frame, in this prescription, there's no need to do that. So, everybody wants to know how to insert a lens like this. If this ever pops out of your frame, again, there is a groove all the way around the lens. There is a groove in the top of this frame. You want to line up the grooves that are there and then you guys can play MacGyver with a little piece of ribbon like for wrapping presents I fold it in half so I can grab both sides of this I slide it in and I grab up close I, I personally I've seen other people start at the nose and work their way towards the edge I like to start at the edge of the lens get the groove down into the slot and then slide it forward giving a tug this way on the string just a little bit at the nose it snaps right in when you hear it snap it is in there and then I put this finger not this finger or the ring finger I put this finger on top of the string and then I slide that out and there you have it so I'm gonna go ahead and take this block off it is no longer needed pull the sticker off dry the block on my hand and I always save these instead of throwing them in the landfill i'm creating my artwork monster i'm trying to increase the diameter of the base it was starting to get top heavy so i'm gonna stick this one down here at the bottom we'll work on the height later but we're going to come down here to the lensometer and we're going to read the prescription off the lens let me grab the flashlight i'm going to spin the axis wheel to 94 almost halfway between 90 and 100 because the prescription reads plus a quarter minus 150 at 94 
I'm going to put it in just above the black dot, which is right where the pupil is. And read the power. And when I say read the power, I'm hopefully I can't see what you guys are seeing. Hopefully you see three skinny lines lined up. And that tells me that I'm at plus a quarter. I'm north of zero in, into the black, which is a quarter. Hang on one second. I'm getting a phone call. Let me turn this off. Sorry about that. The person who was watching the sales floor needed me for a second. Let me make sure this is on. Yes, I see the blinking light. So, the prescription is plus a quarter, minus 150 at 94. We're at plus a quarter. I'm going to check your astigmatism correction of minus 150. I'm going to spin the knob in the minus direction, going towards the minuses in the red. And when I get three thick bars separated, the other ones were three skinny lines very close together. These are three thick bars. It tells me that I'm at the power and I'm at minus one and a quarter, one tick mark south of one. So you need one step of correction for your nearsightedness. You are, well, you are farsighted, so you need one step of nearsighted correction. With your glasses off, everything is actually ever so slightly too small, so it'll magnify one step. That is why there is a plus sign. This is the world's weakest magnifying glass. However, you need five steps, excuse me, six steps. I didn't know there was going to be so much math. Six steps of astigmatism correction. Now, there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. That is it. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. This first number magnifies or minifies. The second number makes everything crisp. Without astigmatism, correction, sixes and eights look alike or the letters P and F. So that is why we're in the minus now. We're subtracting 150 from plus a quarter. And so that's why we're at minus one and a quarter in the red. The pluses are in the black. Now your left eye needs no magnification or minification, but it does need five steps of astigmatism correction. Everything's in quarter increments, starting at zero, which is Plano. P-L is short for P-L-A-N-O. Let me go ahead and write that. Let me pull the pen out of my pocket. That is the abbreviation of Plano. And then starting at plus a quarter, or 50, 75, 1, 1 and a quarter. So that is five steps of astigmatism correction in your left eye, six steps in your right. Now, you have two curves on your eye, a spherical curve this way and an astigmatic curve this way. And that's how you line up those two curves to make everything nice and crisp. And we're going to turn that to the 90th meridian. The straight line is 0 to 180 with 90 in the middle. We're going to turn for your right eye, we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 94, just past the 90th meridian. On your left eye, it's directly on the 90th. So. Now, this is called the ad. This is your bifocal strength. It means in addition to what's up top. So if you were to get reading glasses, you would add these two numbers together. You would need 250 for the right eye, 225 for the left, because 0 and 225 is just that. Now, unfortunately, over-the-counter reading glasses do not correct for your astigmatism correction, so it can magnify, but it's just not crisp. Now, for you can squint and make that out for a couple minutes, but if you're going to do any reading for any extended period of time, that's when you get eye fatigue. So the groove is being cut. Oh, I'm sorry, the safety bevel is being applied to the rear convex surface of the lens. The reason why I put a heavier bevel, what do I do with your frame? It's, oh, there it is. See, it's so minimalist. I put a light bevel on the front of the lens. I put a heavier bevel on the back because should any of this come in contact with the face, it is, it'll be nice and smooth. The other nice thing about Oakley's, these nose pads, they are hollow. This is an air pad, just like a, a raft or an air mattress that is hollow on the inside, making it very soft and comfortable on the nose. Of course, this frame weighs so little, but Oakley Engineering makes this fit so comfortable. Now, this is known as a pilot temple. It goes straight back, whereas something like mine curves behind the ear. People like this, especially people who ride motorcycles, so they can put this on without having to take their helmet off. These can be adjusted downwards, but it gives you different options on how to wear things. Most of their sports glasses do wrap around. Now, a true pilot's temple would be straight. This has got some built-in wraps, so it grips around your head. Let me go ahead and hit the clamp button, the chuck button. Dry everything off. I'm going to go ahead and run my thumbnail around. I love it when that optical sawdust comes off in one piece, almost like 
when it comes out of the lint trap in the dryer in one piece that makes my day so I'm going to drop that on the counter run my thumbnail around do the same thing for the front of the lens to see if any of that is on the lens which it is I'm just gonna make sure I can make sure it's all out of the groove a little bit more time consuming on this one and I do apologize this video goes a little bit longer than most of mine so but I get to cover some different stuff in this one now the other nice thing I can go ahead and remove this block pull that off drop that in to be used again put the sticker at the base to increase the diameter of the base I can go ahead and take the lens first I have to remove the Oakley lens and what I do is I pull outward pulling down on the lens and pushing this way it it breaks the seal and comes out so I'm going to do the same thing here I'm going to tuck it in the groove goes into the groove at the top of the frame here and here I take my my little strap line in there grab it in half and again I start at the outside edge let's make sure all of this is seen take that black string this one's unique because it has a black string most of them are clear start at that outside corner and then move down towards the nose and when you hear the snap it is in there you know which finger I use it's this one place it there and then slide that out and we're secure so the dot has gotten very light let me darken that so you guys can see that a little bit better we're going to come back down here to the lensometer spin the fine tune knob to 90 put my pen back in my pocket and while I'm at it let me go ahead and get my PD stick out because I'll need that I'm going to put it in just above that black dot and read the power those three skinny lines hopefully you guys can see that I can't tell if the GoPro camera is good enough to pull that up and of course let me try this when I break that that turn break that meridian it should go blurry but hopefully I think it should be clear about there nope I'm yep I did it I got the zero on there so Plano is zero we're gonna check your astigmatism correction minus one and a quarter five steps into the minus five quarter increments which puts it at minus one and a quarter one tick mark south of one so that is cut perfectly I couldn't have done a better job if I had cut these lenses myself so your pupillary distance 32.5 for the right 30.5 for the left for a combined value of 63 I'm going to turn the card around, place the PD stick against my thumb on your, let's use the millimeter side and not inches, against your right lens. And then when we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 63 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. We have an optical center height where the progressive and visible bifocal begins at 21. Let's turn the card around. Now we're going to measure in the vertical meridian. We did the horizontal. We're going to measure in the vertical and we are getting to the bottom of the lens 21 millimeters so that is perfect let's do the same thing at the bottom 21 millimeters that is perfect it's called a progressive lens because once you start looking down through this point the magnification progressively gets stronger and stronger imagine if you were in the shallow end of a swimming pool and you started walking towards the deep end as it gets deeper and deeper this gets stronger and stronger so this is the portion in every video that as I clean your lenses I mentioned that there's free shipping anywhere in the US and but should you order a pair of these or any other pair of glasses and you get them in the mail there's a small chance they could be too loose or too tight however there's a much higher chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that's because 80 percent of people have one ear that is higher than the other and I'm no different I'll show you in just a moment I'm part of that 80 percent so just stop because of that 99 percent of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them so stop by your local place just tell them if it's too loose or too tight or if it's high on one side it only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly but I'm going to go ahead and get them in standard alignment first also known as a three-point stance the three points are one two and the bottom of the lens is being three make some room move your crisol cloth out of the way set them on the counter and press down there is no wobble when I say wobble I'm part of that 80% when I take mine off they wobble on the counter but they sit level on me for those of you keeping score at home today I'm wearing the Ray-Ban 2132 new Wayfair which is a sunglass but I've put my clear transition lenses in there so they turn dark when I go outside the same thing I will demonstrate on this pair but first I'm gonna flip them over make sure there is no wobble close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly they do and that neither temple is askew 
these do not have the traditional spring hinge the way this is designed it is a pliable metal and is rather springy itself check the each hinge closes perfectly and equally they do so this is what they look like clear I want to go ahead and clean them one more time and of course I send out you're gonna get the Oakley carrying bag cleaning sock let go tissue to clean your lenses your Crizal cloth to clean your lenses as well as the premium microfiber cloth that I provide. I also provide a selfie request to have your picture on the website but also include cleaning instructions not only for your frame and your lenses but for all three of your cleaning cloths and your case so those two will last you for years. No other seller on the internet does that I am told by the people who buy from me. They are surprised to read that. Now I field test every cleaning cloth before I ship. The other thing I do to protect your lenses as I wrap this around your lenses before shipping so that nothing rubs against your lenses while it is being shipped but when you I field test every cleaning cloth to make sure that it works Oop, and I see one of those black dots I need to clean off before I activate of course this is going to be on the back of the lens right behind the nose pad there we go check this side yep nothing there okay make sure I didn't miss anything but I field test every cleaning cloth to make sure that it works. I'm not going to send out a defective cloth, even though there is no defective cloth. But, but why should I reach in my pocket when there's a brand new one right here that I can use? So when you get these in the mail and you see wrinkles in them, you know that it works. So this is what your lenses look like clear before I activate the transitions gray portion of the lens. I'm going to go ahead and close up the temple and place these into my little transitions box, which essentially just has a strong ultraviolet light in there. And the way these are sitting they'll turn but i'm gonna hold them upright now as you can see it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for all transition lenses to darken you can see them starting to get dark it takes a little bit longer when you come back inside 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 to return back to virtually clear now this is important pay attention all transition lenses will get dark on day one they're going to continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks or exposed to the sun after that they will work for years with maximum performance the only time they won't work is behind if you're behind the windshield of a car your windshield has uv protection ultraviolet protection to stop your dashboard from cracking from sitting in the sun all day and that's why they don't turn dark in a car now if you have a convertible or a motorcycle they will darken now they're also temperature sensitive meaning they'll get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above but i remind everyone when it's 95 degrees outside or 100 degrees you're miserable they're miserable nobody works 100 percent when it's 100 degrees outside now there is the transitions extra active now which do get about 30 to 50 percent dark behind a windshield they will also get darker when you're outside in hotter weather it's, they're called extra active because they're designed for extra active people who spend more time outdoors than others originally people who worked for the department of transportation or surveyors landscapers anyone who was outside all the time would get them now almost everyone gets them this person did not but he owns a business and rarely gets outside he says but the few times he does he wants them to turn dark so that is it if you like what you've seen please subscribe to my youtube channel or you can follow me on instagram or facebook is freeprescriptionlenses.com you can follow me on twitter at free rx lenses the you can email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click the contact me button on the website so i hope you enjoyed watching as i cut the invisible bifocal the essilor ideal advanced progressive lens with transitions gray and crizal anti-glare for the oakley 5113 color 02 which is the pewter in the 56 eye size this is the oakley lizard and hopefully everyone else has got a chance to see how i bring that love and feeling back to glasses thank you